Bree told me last week a, a word that the Lord had given her, and I, I told her that I wanted to bring this. Jennifer had one too, but she's not here. But I wanted her to read this before we get started. Because I want you guys to hear. And hear in spirit, okay? Because this is not a ministry that's going to try to control you. We're going to give you the word of God. We're going to let you make the decision, right? All right? So I just want you to hear in spirit. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, I think about two months, I was in prayer. And I, as I was in prayer, um, I think what the Lord is trying to do, not just with me, but just a lot of people, is like get us past a place in prayer where we're not constantly asking for our needs or the things that we want those you know those um desires that we kind of like put before the lord and get us to a place where we start to uh pray his will and um get in alignment with what he wants us to do for the kingdom and yes. for whatever church that we're a part of so as i begin to pray he revealed a word to me uh for cu and it says, the Lord, uh, the Lord is saying that we are hindering the move of God. God wants to do something great and mighty and see you, but the people are hindering the move of God. I want to show you my glory mightily through, I want to show my glory mightily through my people, but they're more concerned about the idols in their heart, that they're more concerned about their needs, their wants, their desires over the advancement of my kingdom. We have disregarded the word of the Lord time after time, not taking heed to what the leaders are saying to us through prophecy and teaching. And some have, have even come into agreement with rebellion, with rebellion and saying to themselves that they're going to just do what's best for them. For those that continue on in this matter, you will have a season of silence where you won't hear from me or get signs or confirmations from me. No prophecies, no word of the Lord, because you have disregarded what I've already told you and shown you. And for those that that left uh, CU that wasn't supposed to, um, I'm sorry, that for those that left CU that wasn't supposed to, they will be leading themselves blindly, walking into potholes and traps and dead ends because I have given someone to watch over your soul, but you have disregarded what was sent to bless your life and walk you into your calling and to your purpose. Whoa. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. I just wanted to bring that word, you know. Sometimes it's good to hear it, let the Lord speak through somebody else, right? Leaders can tell you that, but sometimes it's disregarded. You know why it's disregarded? Because we're going to hear, y'all just trying to control me. <laughs> right? Y'all just trying to control me. We're here to help everybody. Listen, we're here so that you reach the levels in the, in the path that God has for you. Everybody here has a path. Right? It's a godly path. There's, there's two ways. We could take different paths or we could take godly paths. Right? So this is why God says narrow is the way. Narrow is the street. Because it's easier to take what your flesh is telling you, right? So, I, you know, we're not one to put condemnation on nobody. Oh, you left the ministry, you cursed. You know, religion tells you that. But I, I told you again, I, I believe firmly with all, everybody in here is connected, right? You're part of CU. God placed certain people in your life. Even us, we can't, we can't do it by ourselves, right? We can't be prideful and say, oh, we don't need nobody. Right? There's a season of growth. There's a season of what you need to get out of any, anybody. God will place people in your life, right? To help you, to help you grow, and to tell you the truth. And one thing you know about me, I'm going to tell you the truth, right? It's good to see you, my nephew, Jeremy. It's good to see you in the house, my man. Listen, take this word to heart and listen, because this wasn't us, and please don't think that we called and said, hey, can you give a word? <laughs> you think you can say this? Because they received it from you first. Right? No, this is God. When God speaks, listen. All right? I'm going to start this, uh, this message off a little bit differently than I normally, uh, normally do. I want to read um, 
I can't remember, this was a study done, and I can't remember if it was Yale University, so hold, don't hold me to that if it's not Yale. Somebody did it. <laughs> Somebody did a study. So I'm gonna read this to you first, and then I'm gonna tell you the name of the uh, sermon and you know, the message, and we'll go from there, okay? I want you guys to listen. It says, all people experience difficulties of one type or another. Some people have financial burdens, while others deal with family problems. Some may deal with both. These experiences often lead to what is commonly known as stress. Stress can be broken down into three durations. Number one, life events. Number two, chronic strains. And number three, daily hassles and uplifts. Life events include things such as the birth of a child, the loss of a job, the loss of a friend, divorce or death, this would be anything requiring one to adapt during a short period of time. Chronic strains are such things as long-term illness, injury, poverty, substandard housing, inadequate access to food or water, or not being able to find a job. This would be anything that threatened one's existence or survival over a long period of time. Daily hassles and uplifts, AKA this is what I call life gonna happen right are common everyday irritating and frustrating frustrating stressors of life which include things like moving parenting cooking cleaning studying family demands uh, job duties disagreements with employers friends or spouse not getting enough sleep it could be a flat tire or a car breakdown it could be something simple as missing a bus it could be a deeply dissatisfying job, a wayward child, uh, dealing with racism or discrimination on the job. It could be time pressure hassles, where, where when you get under time pressure, it needs to be done now. This is stress. It could be too many responsibilities or decision making. The article goes on to read, no matter what gender, racial, or economic background a person is born into, there will always be stressors in life. It is a part of everyone's life. Therefore, how a person handles stressors is significant. Excessive or chronic stress, I want you to listen to this here. Excessive or chronic stress slowly drains a person's psychological resources and damages their brains and bodies. What people turn to in time of trouble is relevant. Similar to procrastination, some people strive under pressure and some cannot handle the heat. With, life difficulties, with life's difficulties, some develop emotional symptoms such as stress, fear, depression, anxiety, irritability, mood swings, loneliness, and isolation. They, they develop some, things of feeling, some feelings of, oh, of being overwhelmed. Let um, me say that again. They develop feelings of being overwhelmed, decrease or increase in appetite. And some develop memory conditions which can negatively impact a person's ability to recall or form new memories. This is all from stress. Likewise, some develop addictive behaviors and turn to methods of coping like sexual addictions, drugs, smoking, or drinking. Yet, some others seem to overcome and strive in the midst of trouble. Something seems to separate these two responses. If you could stand for the reading of the word. Coming from Matthews 11, 28 through 30. And this is the message version. That, again, that's Matthews 11, 28 through 30. It reads, are you tired of life? Are you worn out? Burned out on religion and tradition? And let me explain that burned out on religion and tradition. That's going to church, going to church, going to church, but nothing happening for you. I'm doing, I'm doing what everybody say, oh, just, just come to church, just, just have faith, but nothing's happening, nothing's changing in my life, right? Been sick, just, just man, I'm, I've been believing God, there's nothing, nothing changing, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of religion and tradition. It, it goes on, it says, burn down on religion and tradition, it says, come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I, how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. 
Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you the honor and the glory. Father, I decrease as you increase. Holy Spirit, have your way. Father, you see every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place, Father, Lord. These, these are your children, Father. You know exactly every situation they are going through. So I ask as I decrease that you speak, Holy Spirit. Father, Lord, you come. Let the people not see this man. Let them not hear it, Father. Let them not see that this is coming from fleshy, but let them hear your spirit and what Christ is saying to the church. Father, we will give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone say it. Amen. And you may be seated. Hallelujah. The name of this message is Faith Come Alive. As a subtitle, Heaven's Journey to Pure Faith. I'm going to say that again. Faith come alive. Heaven's journey to, a, to pure faith. As I was preparing this message, God was speaking to me, you know, about things like depression, anxiety, and worry, and fear, and all that other stuff. And I was beginning at first, I was beginning to think that bless what the Lord would want me to speak on, uh, or to teach on. And the Lord said no. He says, teach on the main root cause of depression, anxiety, worries, and fears. Nobody ever really touch on the subject of stress. It's something we all experience, right? Right? I'm gonna read again the effects of stress, just to make this point. The article said the stress slowly drains a person's psychological resources, that's your mind, and it damages the brain and the body. Wow. Stress is the reason for fear, depression, anxiety, irritability, mood swings, loneliness, and isolation, feeling overwhelmed, decreased in or increase in appetite. Some develop memory conditions which can negatively affect, impact a person's ability to recall or form new memories. Likewise, some develop addictive behaviors. Is it no wonder that stress is one of the biggest weapons that Satan uses on us? Huh? See, we don't see it that way. Do you realize that some people, because of stress, are they literally lose their mind? I'm not talking about temporary. I mean, they never come back. I'm talking about stress being so overwhelming that their body, their body can't handle it so much that they go blank. Their mind is gone. See, what we don't realize is some of us under God's grace, they don't real, you don't realize how thankful we should be because we should be locked up right now in a mental home. Yes. Amen? Amen? Somebody say, but God. but God. Our bodies cannot physically handle stress. This is why we get irritable. This is why our mood changes. What does the word of God say? Cast your cares upon me because, right? The burdens are too heavy, but mine are light. I'm getting ahead of myself here. But some of us don't realize the grace that we can just be one problem away from losing our minds. Even as I Googled the words, what are the common stressors of life. I mean, all types of stress management companies came up, all types of peel. Of course, you saw the number one, marijuana. All the solutions to stress. This is how you can get rid of stress, right? And let me tell you, people, all some people, including Christian going, how do I say this without offending? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saved and full of the Holy Ghost, baptized with fire, but I'm turning to these methods. Wow. Let me say this as God's messenger. I thank God God didn't make me afraid of y'all. Besides sin, there's nothing more a smack in God's face than for a Christian to turn to these methods when God has already 
allowed his son to die for us. Why did, why did Jesus die? Not so we can go to heaven. So we can be free. Right. Whom the Lord sets free. It's free indeed. Now listen. God sent his son to die for us so that we can live stress-free. I didn't say problem-free. Right? I didn't say problem-free. That's, that's what we get in. You know, we got to stop telling people, come to church so God can fix your problems. <laughs> no, no, you live in... I'm getting ahead of myself. See, the Lord has already done a study himself. Right? We'll take scientists, right? Even scientists agree. You know that, man, we see a difference right here. There's a, there's, there's, it's two different responses. What's the difference in responses? Why do some people lose their mind and they overwhelm with stress, but some people, they strive. And, 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 and listen, when trouble comes, they strive. No problem. They overcome. The Lord study in John 16, 33 says, in this life, you're going to have many trials and troubles and sorrows. It says, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Yes. Romans 8, 37 says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. Because Jesus overcame the world, we overcome. And it's everyone going to experience it. John 14, 27, I am leaving you with a gift. That gift is peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't a gift the world, the same gift that the world gives you. It says, so don't be troubled or afraid. Right? Listen, we'll, we'll, it's, 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 I don't know, again, I'm trying to say, some, sometimes I say we're on words and I offend people. So it's, it's just it's how a prophet is, but Sometimes I try to I try to think about what I'm gonna say. <laughs> so let me say this. Um, no, nah, I better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this world is evil, and it's never going to change. We would be we would be insane to think that it's going to be peaceful all the time. That everything gonna be peachy and God gonna bless my life. I'm never gonna have any trouble. <laughs> Did I say that better? Like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's always gonna be some drama or stress in your life. The good news is that Jesus never told us, well, you're just gonna have to deal with it yourself. You're just gonna have to deal with it. He, he never told us that. He says, I leave you my peace. What do you need peace? Not when everything going well. You need peace of mind and heart when all is going to hell. At least we feel like it, right? So the question arises, how do I experience his peace even in an evil, unjust world? We all know that God has given us many weapons to fight with, right? The word of God it says, put on the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth. And we got fasting and praying. We got our worship, right? Praying to God, worshiping God. That all makes us feel good. But I want to talk to you today about the most important weapon needed. But it's the most important weapon that most Christians lack. Can I tell you what that is? Yes. Pure faith. Without pure faith, you can worship. You can pray. You can fast. You can cry. Nothing is going to happen. Did y'all hear me? Let me say it again. Without pure faith, pray all you want to. If you're not praying in faith, it's nothing. There's no power. There's no results. You can come and cry your out and worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Nothing. Nothing. 
You can fast for a thousand days. If you fast without faith. So what am I saying? Without faith, the rest of the weapons don't even work. Jesus. But we're, we're still employed. I'm fasting. I'm fasting, so. It's quiet in here, so. Without faith, you can't worship. Without faith, you can, but ain't nothing gonna happen. Without faith, you never put on the helmet of salvation. Is it no wonder why Satan first attacks our faith? Did you know that even a God-given ability or gift like, you know, you guys see me prophesy. You see people just break down crying and we, oh, oh my God, they got a good word. But did you know that I can't prophesy without faith? That even it, 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 it demands faith. No matter where you go, faith. Yes. Even preaching this word of God takes faith. Yes. Or you will crumble. Yes. Right? Opening this ministry took faith. Before we had one member, God says, open the min open here, put your own money up and, and open this and build this out. Lorente is one of the few that know how this place looked, right? It was pretty bad, wasn't it, brother? <laughs> it took faith to say, God has told us to open a ministry. Let me go and we're going to believe God. You know what your flesh tell you? Man, ain't one person going to show up. Oh, it whispers, what if? What if, what if you do all this for nothing? Uh-oh. See, y'all not the only one to deal with doubt. You have to overcome that. Romans 12 and 6 says, in his grace, God has given us give, different gifts for doing certain things well. It says, so if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. Uh-oh. I want you I want to read a quote from Oswald Chambers. Y'all know I love him. I read it every day. But there's a quote that says this. It says, When the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? That's actually a scripture in, in Luke 18, 8. It says, We all have faith in good planning in good principles, in good management, in good common sense. But who among us have faith in Jesus Christ? It says physical courage is grand. Moral courage is even grander. But the man who trusts Jesus Christ in the face of the terrific problems of life is worth more than a crowd of heroes. I want you to just point to yourself and say, faith come alive. I say, faith come alive in me. Faith come alive in me. The word of God refers to faith as a shield, right? We all know what we see. We see all these old shows. What do you shoot shields for? Protection, right? I, I want to forget about you know fear and anxiety, depression, and all that the worry. If we learn to yield uh, to use faith as a shield, none of those things will ever get to us. Because stress would have been blocked, right? Those are those are the the uh, stress is stress is the cause of all that, right? So if we can block and use the gifts of God to block that, then we'd never experience that. All stress and anxiety and, and depression is 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 more demonic spirits. Each one of them got their own name, right? I want to. I want to make. I want to be clear in this. Stress in and of itself is not a sin. That's what you're going to experience. I like it to. I don't know if y'all remember. I did a message and, on, and it was on um, um, offense. One scripture in the Bible said that it is impossible for us for offense not to happen. Right? It's impossible for stress not to happen. Same thing. Right? But it's allowing. It's the allowing of the stress to overtake us that's the sin. Right? Let me tell you why. 
Allowing stress to overtake us is a sin because it means that your belief system, your faith, is now firmly rooted in what you're seeing and feeling and not in God. Yes. You hear that? If I let stress overtake me, I have faith, but I have faith in what I'm seeing and feeling. Right? Everybody has faith here. Yes. I, want, I want anybody, has any, anybody that came in here, and I want you to tell the truth here. When you came in here, did anybody sit down and say, I wonder if this chair held me, will hold me? Nobody. <laughs> you had faith it was going to hold you. Yeah. Right? Am I, am I just? Yes. Sure. Yeah, we did. Okay. <laughs> you didn't question it one bit. Did anybody leave their house and say, I wonder if my car is going to start? Nope. You had faith. You said, I'm going to church tomorrow. No, we have faith. Our faith is just misplaced. It's misplaced in this world and in material things. But did you know that man made this chair? You could very well sit on it and fall. Matter of fact, there's some screws coming out of the back of the chairs right now. Right? They, I think somebody hand me a screw every, every Sunday. Here, yeah, I found this screw on the floor. Right? Yep. We have faith in, 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 the mo in everything except for Jesus Christ. You know what the greatest, listen, a lot of us have more faith in our jobs than we do God. Your job is not your provider. God is. That's right. come, listen, I don't care what it is, how big it is. You think it's a big corporation? Big corporations fall. Y'all see all these people? You think that's your, oh yeah, I always have a job. Yeah, they're a big corporation. They're billionaire. They billionaire corporation. Listen. You can go to work tomorrow and they can tell you, hey, it's your last week. Amen? Amen. You better be rooted in something else because you're going to go crazy when they tell you that. Amen. Your faith better be rooted in God. You preaching? Preaching baby Roman? Yeah. <laughs> I, got one, I got one witness over there. And Roman said, the prophet is preaching. It's after we allow stress to come in. It's after we, we, we firmly put our faith in the situation and what we're seeing that we claim, man, this is, this is more than, this is, listen, this is too big for me. And not only is it too big for me, it's too big for you, God. That's what you're saying. Oh, you don't have to say it out of your mouth. Your action says it. After we sin like this and continue to allow stress to come, it, it gives, I want you to understand this, it gives Satan a legal right to attack us. Only sin gives, Satan cannot attack you. Again, I give this illustration. Has anybody, if we had any smokers in the house, you don't have to raise your hand. Right? Let me just go ahead and say, if you, if you smoke cigarettes, that's a nicotine demon. If you don't want to smoke anymore, we can cast out of you today. Amen. I had one too. Right? I used to smoke Newport 100s down to the filter. So they know the story. Steel puff. Burn my finger. Come on, marijuana smokers. Come on. Well, you know, God, God made the God made marijuana, so it's good for you. Tell your neighbor that's a demon right there. <laughs> this stuff is what we put in place of the stress. They'll tell you, oh, you, you deal with stress? My doctor, he prescribed me marijuana. It's legal marijuana. Do you think God, do you think that's a good with God still? No. Because your doctor prescribed it for you? Okay. <laughs> That wasn't in my sermon, so it must be in the house. <laughs> this is why, right, this situation here, this is why most Christians feel as if having faith really doesn't work. 
If you do a research, most Christians, I, I believe. I, I believe. I'm here to tell you that believing is just a small, minute beginning of faith. It's just, it's just a, and we just put our hope in, in that. I, I, I believe, I believe. I'm going to show you this. Fully grown, faith fully grown and mature goes way beyond just believing. One of God's main principles of promise, when he promises us something, right? And how he operates throughout the earth is seed time and harvest, right? So for seed time and harvest to take place, we got to have some patience, right? Because a farmer can't go plant corn today and then come out outside tomorrow, where's my corn, guy? Because it, it takes patience. That's how, God, that's how God operates with his promises. He ain't gonna fix your situation overnight. Right, we live we live like all the be all right, let me say that. Blam. Right? We live like all the be for 30 years, then we come to church. I, I've been in church one week, God, what what's what's going on? You you ain't fixed everything yet? <laughs> Tell your neighbor it takes time. God gonna fix it, but it takes time. We have no patience. We think God is like the world trade system. I forgot to give you a hundred. You're going to give me a thousand back. Oh, that was a good investment. I came to church. That's a good investment. Oh, wait a minute now, prophet. I've been investing my time for a week now. Why, where's my return? That's how we come to God. One of his main principles is seed time and harvest. So I want y'all to picture this in your mind. Is this how God showed it to me? Faith is actually a seed planted on the inside of us, right? In order for us to understand how faith actually works, I'm going to first speak on what it takes to naturally grow a seed, right? Because I want you to get this. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 46, it says first natural, then spiritual, right? That's how God operates, first natural, then spiritual. People would think, no, nah, spiritual first. No, for us, it's first natural, your flesh. So God oftentimes leaves example in the natural for us to see that mimics the spiritual, right? So that's why I'm going to talk to you about this. It's, first, it's also important for us to know and understand that we've also, because of sin, we've, na we've naturally inherited a seed that's equal to the, the seed of faith that God planted in us. You know what that seed is called? Doubt and unbelief. So imagine these seeds. This seed is ingrained in our flesh, doubt and unbelief. This is why our flesh can only believe what it sees. It only believes what it feels. This is why we, we're so aimed, we can, turn to, we can turn to fleshly sin so fast because this feels good. I know what you said, God, but right now, this feels good. I know you said you're going to fix my situation, God, but what I'm seeing is that you're not. I see it. I see it broken still. See, that's what your flesh tells you. Doubt always tries to conquer faith. God says, believe. Your flesh says, what if, what if this happens? What if, what if that happens? And listen, that's going to happen for the rest of your life. So I want you to understand you have a seed of doubt. But God, when Jesus died, he came and he planted in us a seed of faith. Right? Any gardener would tell you that a seed lies dormant until it is activated. Right? Anybody ever held it? If I hold, if I hold a, any seed of any type in my hand like this, it's in the package. If I pour it out, would, it, would that seed grow? So I think we all agree that it needs something to be activated, right? Any gardeners in here? Plants on? Okay. Am I right? Okay. I thought I was. <laughs> Even if we just plant a seed in the soil and walk away, and it receives nothing else, 
Will it grow? Right? There's some things you still have to do after that, right? So I want you to catch that. God planted a seed in this soil. And it has not yet grown. Are y'all following me? Yeah. Show is quiet in here. I want you to understand again, both seeds stay dormant until they are activated and the nourishment, and until they receive the nourishment, nourishment that is needed for both seeds to grow. So the same applies for our seed of faith. Before any follower of Christ can begin to function in the capacity they were created and designed for, the seed of faith needs to be activated. And here's one of my, my main points of this, what I just said. God understands that the seed of faith or the seed of righteousness that he planted inside of us takes time to grow and takes time to mature. Nobody just started off here. If your, if your faith is strong now, uh, you didn't just start off, oh, I got strong faith. I believed everything God told me from one. See, sometimes we read, this, we read the stories in the Bible and it just says, and Gideon did this, and this person that we read in Hebrews 11, oh, this person did this, it just seemed like they automatically had faith. Don't you believe for a minute that doubt wasn't telling them, to, how you gonna do this? Here's the proof. One of the greatest prophets in the Bible, Elijah, right? This man had enough faith to challenge every prophet of, ba of Baals, right? He called down fire from heaven. Right? As a matter of fact, let me show you how good God is. Pour water on the fire. He said, y'all go ahead. I'm going to give y'all eight hours. Go ahead. Check. Do all you want to. See if your God answered by fire. Mm. He answers by fire. Right? That's right. God, our God answers by fire. The very next scene, the very next verse says that Jezebel sends a message to him. Mm. And says, see if you don't be dead by the end of tonight. And the greatest prophet in the world runs. And not only that, I want you to take note that his, 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 his gift, his being used, ended right then. God didn't use him no more. He ran away and God said, what are you doing here? And so, you know, he, he ended up uh, picking somebody else. It was too much. Right? I believe with all my heart, his faith got crushed. Yeah. Listen, listen, I'm telling you right there. I, feel, I put myself in them shoes. It seemed like I'd be real prayerful. Right? What you going to do? Jezebel says she's going to kill me. I'm going to call down fire on you. <laughs> right, don't, don't it seem like you would be... Yeah. If you just kill... Listen, then after that, they just killed thousands of... Pro if you on my side, kill everybody. You just saw God rain down fire. Mm. I pose to you that the seed of doubt came. And the seed of doubt told him that Jezebel was more powerful than God, even though I just saw. Yes. Oh, my God. See, that show you the seed of doubt that's in your flesh. I just saw God move. Like, I don't understand. It, 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 am, I, am I just exaggerating or is that a good miracle right there? God just proved to him I'm with you. But that seed of doubt. Elijah, what are you doing here? God said. He kept on repeating the same thing. All your prophets have gotten killed, and now they're trying to kill me. Elijah, what are you doing here? He says the same thing. All your prophets have got killed, and now they're trying to kill me. God knew right then and there that see the doubt had taken over. He still went to heaven. But don't think for a second that God didn't have more for him. I think we can agree that he was stressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. I, I think he, listen, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say that he feel more stressed way more than we ever with our little situation. <laughs> we, we, we need, I need $500 for rent. And people trying to kill him. Listen, a wo listen, and on top of this, a woman threatens him. Wow. You're naturally stronger than a woman. And you run. After you just got, just you. Okay. Okay. 
in the natural, there are three primary and necessary conditions needed for a seed to be activated. They are oxygen, water, and the right temperature. The activation process is called germination. The definition of germination is to begin to grow and put out shoots after a period of dormancy. I want you all to take note here that you're, this seed that's, that's in the soil is nowhere rooted. It's just sitting in the soil. It hasn't been rooted in the soil. Likewise, the seed of faith lies dormant, and it doesn't begin the process of growing or germinating until it receives three things. Please note this here, that even though you are in the beginning of the germination process, your faith is nowhere nearly firmly rooted in God. It's just a beginning. The three things that are needed for the seed of faith to grow is the same. It's water, oxygen, and temperature. Except it's water in the spirit, right? It's oxygen in the spirit and the right temperature in the spirit. See, God always gives us an example. Water in the spirit, it represents hearing the word of God. Right? The seed of faith needs to hear the word of God. Romans 10, 16 through 17 says, But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. So the seed of faith lies dormant till you first hear, right? And something began to spark in you. What? You know, the Bible says that the, the, the message of Christ is foolishness to people who don't know God, right? And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, the story, story sounds kind of crazy to me. But why do we believe? Jesus died for our sins. He came down and sent God and... But when you're told that story, something resonates with you. It says, this is truth. Right? This is truth right here. It's something to this. This is what I've been missing in my life. Anybody else had that experience? Yeah. It sounds foolish. Like, what? You tell somebody else who don't, who's not called, they, what? So water in the spirit is hearing the word of God. I just got through speaking. It, it's, it, it hears the seed of faith hears the word of God. So oxygen in the spirit, it represents the free gift of faith, the seed of, of, of the seed of faith that God placed in us. It's the free gift of faith, which is the seed that God placed in us. So that's oxygen. The oxygen represents God breathing new life into the seed of faith of us. That's how he breathes new life into us. Through that seed of faith. 2 Peter 1 and 1 says, The faith I speak of is the kind that Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, gives, up, gives to us. How precious it is and how just and good he is to give this same faith to each of us. So understand that you didn't give yourself faith. Right? If you ask anybody, if you ask, uh, I, think, I think most Christians, they, mis, they, they, they misunderstand what faith is, right? If you ask uh, most followers of Christ, okay, what is faith? What's the most common answer? Just believing. Right? Well, how do I have, uh, well, how do I have faith? Just belief. Right? But it goes beyond that. The next one, the temperature in the spirit, it represents us believing. Ephesians 2, 8 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed through faith. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. When we believe, he creates the right temperature and atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to come in and save us. You understand that? Belief activates. It's like, it's like belief is the first thing that activates our germination process, our growing process. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must first believe. 
So you see, when I first believe and I say, God, I, I, I recognize this as truth. I need you. That seed of faith sparked upon. Feeling all good and everything else. And I, I'm not going to lie to y'all. When I initially was researching this, I thought that sunlight would be one of the, one, the main things that it would need for a seed to grow. Anybody else think that? But as I, I was reading about germination, it stated this. And I was blown away because God spoke to me about this. It says light is not necessary for a seed to germinate. In fact, the majority of seeds grow most effectively in the dark. Light may actually hinder the germination process. Wow. But then the Lord, it, it, it hit me. It made sense to me. The Lord, Holy Spirit gave me wisdom. Right? It, it hit me. Light can't, it, it can't hit a seed because it's, it's covered up, right? So the sun can't touch it. As I was pondering that, God said this, just as a natural seed is surrounded by darkness in the soil, so I knew that the seed of faith would initially be surrounded by nothing but darkness. Wow. Oh my goodness. Imagine that God planted a seed of faith in us by nothing but just sand, dirty, filthiness. And he said, you're not going to need my son right now. God says, I knew that as seeds or babies in Christ, that too much demand on us and, uh, and our faith, too much light would actually hinder you. I'm going somewhere here. God says, listen, I understand you've been through a whole lot. And at this point, it's hard for you to trust anybody. You've been through so much. All right? Because listen, that invitation that God gave us, are you tired? Come to me. That takes faith. For you to trust somebody, he says, trust me. Put your burdens on me. That's, that's a trust thing. Trust is faith. So God says, I understand that you don't want to trust anybody. You can't trust me at this point. I understand you're still a seed in the ground surrounded by a bunch of dirt. So I'm not going to shine my light on you and tell you everything that's wrong with you. Right? <laughs> I'm just going to let you just listen. All I want you to do right now, just, just do this for me. Just germinate. Just begin to spread your weed. You ain't fully rooted in me. I understand. All I need you to do at this moment is believe. And although you're still surrounded by darkness, your believing is enough for me to begin you, the, the process of you growing and taking root in me. Did that make sense? Yeah, I didn't know y'all was going to get a little lesson on gardening, did you? <laughs> I want you to keep in mind that the seed of doubt or unbelief also grows in the dark. And in fact, it thrives on the dark. You don't ever want to see light. I just want to stay in the dark. It grows most, it grows best in the dark. You know why? This is what, this is why Satan, I don't know, I shouldn't have said, you know what? This is why Satan always tries to injure us when we're young. Yeah. Right? Most of us, we can have a testimony, the, the worst thing that ever happened to you and, 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 and what, what molded you most is when you were young. Right? That's when, when we deal with incest, family taking advantage of us, things happening to us, hurt, right? Not, not feeling loved by our mothers or our fathers. Just a, a, it's, it's a lot. Feeling rejected. Feeling like my life is always just trouble. It's just, it's just like I, I, can't, I can't win for losing. This gets into us. This is why Satan, he puts that in us right now because it grows the, the, the seed of doubt and unbelief. Then when God comes and tells us, we can't, we can't receive it. Because doubt and unbelief is like a weed that grew. Wow. The next stage for a plant is called the seedling growth. It's the stage where the plant begins to sprout up from the earth. And as it sprouts up, it is exposed to the light. The light then becomes essential for the seedling to grow. 
Likewise, in order for us in our faith to grow, the light of God has to shine on us. Light being, light being shined on us represents our faith being tested. You know your faith can't grow without it being tested? Yes. Let me go on a little further. Your faith can't grow without trouble. How can you tell me I have faith in you, but you, but listen, you can't tell, even a relationship, let me tell you in a relationship, the greatest relationships are the ones who have been tested by fire, right? I think Mama Chantel and Apostle Duran would tell you that the relationship, see, we see all good now, but I believe they'll testify, first came fire, right? Y'all looking so serious. <laughs> the essence of faith, y'all hear it all the time. The, er the very essence of faith is that it must be tested. You can't say you have faith and you haven't been tested, you haven't been through nothing. Everybody has faith and believe when you, when, when, when you have a million dollars in the bank. Oh, I believe God is good. <laughs> You're going to proclaim that all the time? God want to know that you believe he's good when I take it off from you like Job. <laughs> See, now we can declare that Job is a man of faith. Yes. Oh, I want you to catch this. When God told Abraham, I want you to sacrifice the greatest thing you love, your son. Now, God. Listen, it wasn't until he says, okay, I'm going to obey you, God. Listen, don't think for a minute he wasn't here in doubt. Why would God give you your son and then tell you to kill him? See, we think that they just, these men of God just, okay, let's go, let me go kill my son for you, God. Whatever you say. No, no, no. Catch, catch this. They had doubt too. What's the difference? The two responses. Somebody believed. Somebody said, God, the Bible records that Abraham's believed that if I do kill him, that God had enough power to bring him back to life. Did the Bible say that? I'm going to do what you say do. Who was God testing? All my tests of faith is just a test. Is this God bigger in your life than me? Will you worship what I created over me? It's all God test. I don't see nobody writing right now. It's just too much. It just hurts too much. <laughs> you always write here. Come on. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't typing not one thing. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Is this good? Yes. It must be tested before you say it's pure. You know what? Most Christians, they, their faith, 90% of Christian faith end at the belief. Oh, listen. Oh, we'll do the first requirement of believing because that's the easy part. Right? We'll happily say the, say the, uh, start the germination process. If you, you know, if the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you believe in your heart that, that Jesus died for your sins, and that three days later God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. Oh, that feels good. We at church, I got saved. I got saved. It feels good and God touches your life. <laughs> again, that's where most confess born again Christians' faith stop. And they remain there for their whole walk. You know why? Because at that stage, you're still surrounded by darkness. Yes. Mm, wow. That's so good. This is where we get playing church, not half-heartedly giving our hearts to God. Because yes. the germination just began to start, but I'm still surrounded by darkness. And in fact, I'm still surrounded by more darkness, more than light. I haven't even seen the light, so I can't possibly. So this is where Christians come in playing church. One leg in the door, one leg in the world. Yes. Right? Just got through clubbing last night, but we hear, God, thank you. 
Thank you for saving me from that shooting last night. Thank you, God. I almost killed that girl. I had a knife in my hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I almost overdosed. I know I shouldn't have tried that. You know, when most people come to church because they're guilty, because they feel guilty. And there's only one day. You know why? Because you're still surrounded by darkness. I want you to see, I, I want, that's why I want you to imagine this. Imagine that seed. You're just beginning to sprout. But you're still surrounded by sin, dirt, filth. That's what your flesh is. This is the darkness. Your flesh is sinful. And anybody who don't think so, you're a liar. <laughs> I didn't laugh. Okay, I've been <laughs> It's easy to play church when that happens. Right. And as we begin to sprout here, the light shines on us. And we actually literally reverse the process and go back into the dirt. Wow. Yeah, I hear that. As the light shine on us, imagine that. I want you to imagine that right there. Because you're supposed to be growing. Well, what a lot of Christians say, uh-uh, that light is too bright. Come on. I'm going to go back into the dirt. I'm going to return. As a dog returns back to his vomit, so a fool returns back to his ways, his sins. So you will find yourself on this roller coaster. Circle. I want God. I don't want God. I want God, but I still want to fulfill this flesh. This, these feelings, these feelings just overwhelm me. Wow. This is where it gets real dangerous for us. John 3, 18. It says, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact, that God's light came into the world, but the people love the darkness more than the light. Wow. For their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near the light for fear that their sins will be exposed. Wow. Mm. So I'm going to return to darkness, God. I start growing, but this light, uh, I'm burying right myself right back into that soil. Some people ask, you know, and I, I ask this question myself. Like, God, why do, you have to, like, why do you have to test our faith with bad things? Right? Don't wait. Come on. It, you, know, you know why these questions always question? I don't, listen, let's just be real. Y'all know I'll be telling them myself. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You have a rebellious seed inside of you mm. that always want to question its maker. Yes. Sometimes I be driving and I just hear... A voice say, well, why God? Isn't this what Satan did? This is what Satan said. Why God got to have you do all that? Why, why we got to do all that? For what? Am I the only one who heard us? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we get mad at God. God, I've been doing this all my life. I've been gone. I'm tired of You know why? Seeds of doubt in us. It's seeds of unbelief. God is trying to grow our faith, but we keep on letting it be. We don't even try to rebuke the belief, the unbelief. I say, I say, Satan, are you a liar? God is just. Yes. Mm. Doubt always try to tell you God is unjust. Yes. This is why Satan wanted to take over. He thought God didn't know what he was doing. Mm. Isn't that a spirit of antichrist? Doubt is a spirit of antichrist. It's always telling you God is, doesn't know what he's doing. God is unjust. Why would God allow this to happen to you? I'm going to answer this question with a natural question. I think y'all probably I get it. And if you don't get it, you get it on the way home from church. So I answer you with this. I googled, do plants need light to grow? 
The answer was increased light duration allows the plant to make sufficient food to survive and grow. However, plants require some period of darkness in order to properly develop and should be exposed to light no more than 16 hours per day. Wow. Could it be that you need some darkness in your life in order to develop? Mm. Why did I have to go through this, God? If you love me, allow the darkness so that you can develop. But this showed me this. There's 24 hours in a day, am I right? Yep. God gave us 16 hours of light and only exposed it to eight hours of darkness. Wow. God is still just. Yeah. Mm. He is still good. Yes. He gives us more good than he does bad. Yes, he mm. I'm a witness. Wow. Yes. Here's the problem. Satan always convinced us through doubt and unbelief that the bad is more than the good. Yes, that's good. And the Bible says that a man that trusts in himself won't even see good when it comes to them. Mm. Isn't that what the word says? Yes. It says when good come to them, they won't even, if that man is like a, a tree, a, 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 what do I call it, a shrunted shrub, a shrunted, and what, I'm saying the wrong word, uh, what am I saying, yeah, shriveled. shriveled, shriveled shrub, that's what the Bible says, it says the man who trusts him in himself, you, you, listen, you already shriveled up, you begin to think, you, be, you, you, you think your opinion about God is right? It says, but the man who trusts in the Lord is like a tree planted by the... See, see where the seed comes in again? You're always getting fed. Tree, you, you, you like, it says, even when drought comes, when trouble comes to your life, that tree still produces. That's what faith does. I'm going to give you five. Let me see if I finish that. Yeah. I'm going to give you five necessary things to have continually have active faith and effective faith. And they just so happen to fit in the acronym of faith. F-A-I-T-H. The F stands for foundation. Psalms 11.3. It says, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Matthew 7 to 24 through 27 says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and flood waters rise and the wind beats against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds his house on sand. When the rains and, and the floods, and I want you to understand the rains and the flood represents trouble in life comes and the wind beats against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Isn't that what Christians do? Collapse. Soon as trouble comes, hey, where you been? I'm just going through. <laughs> Everything just seemed to hit me. Ask your neighbor, where's your faith? See, your faith is being tested. You don't even realize it. Point to yourself, say, faith come alive. Faith come alive. Say, faith come alive in me. Faith come alive in me. Oh, my God. The foundation of a building is the most important part of a building. It's the substructure that bears the weight of the building and makes it stable. A lot of time and work goes into putting a strong foundation in place because of its importance. We've all seen pictures of destruction uh, to concrete buildings with weak foundations in third world countries because of hurricanes and tsunamis and earthquakes. These concrete buildings looked strong on the outside, but when the storms came, they crumbled like they were made of sticks. So it is too of your faith. You can look like you're so strong. That's what most people do. Oh yeah, I'm good. Just went through a whole 48 hours of depression. Come to church. Oh, your God is good, God. You look like. Oh my God. God wanna make this thing real in you. The A in faith, it stands for accurate answers. You know why? I'm telling you, we a lie to ourselves. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong. 
Oh, uh, you know, I, I can stop that anytime I want. <laughs> yeah, I ever hear a smoker say that? Smoke three packs a day. I can stop anytime I want. I just like it. <laughs> I want to read you an example of this in Mark 9 and 19. It says, you faithless people, how long must I deal with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So the boy was brought to him, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening, Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. The spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. Doubt. <laughs> Look at Jesus' response. What do you mean if I can? <laughs> Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believed. He says, what do you mean if I can? Anything is possible if you believe. Here's what I love about this. The father was honest with himself. He says, it says the father instantly cried out, I do believe, right? In other words, I want to believe. But he says, but help me overcome my unbelief. Wow. Accurate answers. My life didn't begin to change until I said, Lord, I'm nothing but a thief. Because I used to make excuses all the time. I'm, I'm like this because of my mother. I'm, I, I steal it because of this. Oh, that company deserved for me to be stole from because they take up everybody's money anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll come up with some excuse. You know, again, we come up with excuse. Well, the reason why I'm promiscuous and I slept with these people because I got molested when I was young. You know what God told me? He said, son, he spoke to me in such a gentle voice. He said, son, all that stuff happened to you. And I'm not talking about the molestation. I'm just giving you an example. Now, all the stuff I used to have excused. I've never been molested. But some people might have done that. They've dealt with it. That's why I said that. He says, all that happened to you. But I'm here now. What's your excuse? Well, I instantly had to shut my mouth. I know you lost your father and he wasn't able to see your children at the age of 40, but I'm your father. Mm. You see what God will do? I'll become everything that you need me to become. Stop the excuses. Yes. Right? We lie to ourselves. The reason I'm this way is because of this. I didn't have no support. I didn't have, listen, you're not the only person. I used to say it all the time. And then I would get mad at people who was prospering. <laughs> but do you know the people who are prospering? They're prospering for a reason. Maybe they gave their life to God and, and they let their faith be tested. Right? When all seemed like I was getting ready to die. Y'all remember the, the disciples being on the boat? Jesus was sleeping. Care not that you perish, that I die. That's what we tell people. You care not that, that my situation, oh, you don't love me. Care not that I die. Jesus says, listen, you know why Jesus was asleep? Because he already received the word that he's going to have to die on the cross. He knew it wasn't this time. He, you understand that? He already knew. God didn't say that I was going to die on, on, on the boat. <laughs> That's not the prophecy. Amen? Amen. Wow. Do you know that you can't even, I, I didn't even realize this, that you know that you can't even evaluate yourself, truly evaluate yourself without faith? Let me prove it to you. Romans 12, 3. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourself by the faith God has given you. See, faith 
when, when active, true act of faith come into play, you would declare, God, I'm, I'm the nastiest person in the world. If you don't have faith, you stay to you. I'm not that bad. <laughs> well, you know, such and such, they they done this. I didn't. You know, their sins is better. You know why, why people like looking at drama on TV? Because it makes them feel like their drama is less. Yeah. They fighting and doing all this other type of stuff. Well, they love some drama shows, reality TV. Faith is pure, so it helps us see, it helps you see yourself the way you truly are. The next one is I, and we're almost finished. The I in faith. Integrity. Not integrity in yourself. Integrity in the word of God. Do you really believe it? Do you believe that God is a man of his word? Do you believe the prophecy that the man of God give you? <laughs> uh, listen, I'm, I'm guilty of this too. I'm prophet, prophet, give me a prophecy and I'm, I'm, I'm tearing that prophecy apart. Well, that, I don't understand that. I don't know what you're talking about with that. It's right here I agree with. I agree with all the good stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, God said you're going to be wealthy. Oh, yeah, I know that. God said you're going to, oh, yeah. Well, God says you're going to preach his word. <laughs> you're wrong on that one, buddy. <laughs> Now tell me what I want to hear. Yes. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on. That first one, it made me feel good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you was on there. Listen, you lost me right there. You, you can see it right there. We prophesying to people. Uh, God says you're going to... Hold on. You lost me right there. Now. I was feeling real good for a moment. Uh, you said I'm going to do what for the Lord? The reliability of it. You know, do you believe every word of it? Do you believe that word that speaks to your situation? Do you believe some of it or just all of it? Do you believe that God will keep his promises? Numbers 23 and 19 says God cannot lie. Yes. That when he makes a promise, he won't change his mind. I heard somebody say once that the Bible is either the greatest thing that ever happened to anybody or the biggest lie in man's history. You know that? I want y'all to see that. That's two seeds talking. One of them says, I believe. The other one's telling him it might be a lie. <laughs> you see that? Right now, you have a seed of faith in you, you have a seed of doubt. The T represents trust. I'm telling you, this can be the hardest thing for people to do because of their life experiences. I can tell you the hardest thing for me to do, it wasn't, it wasn't really stopping womanizing and stopping, it was having faith. Because here I am, I could provide for myself. I know how to steal and get money like this. Oh, listen, we got some hustle in us. But I hear God say, trust me. Okay, God, you got a week, and then uh, I'm going to handle it myself. Because my bill is due. Yep. I did this, I, I, I went through this pattern many years. But God never did that. I'm telling you, I, I love God so much because he was so gentle. He's still saying, oh, now I load my, my safe back up because I want to keep my money in the bank. I didn't trust nobody. <laughs> I'm the thief, but I didn't trust nobody. I made sure nobody stole from me. It's okay for me to steal from everybody else. We have a twisted thinking. And I really, I really, I mean, wow. I, like now, I just thinking like, Lord, thank you. So some of people be talking to me, I'd be like, Lord, thank you. I was like that before. I don't tell them that. Thank you for delivering my mind. They really think they right. Oh. So, so far off. Because, of, because this is where Satan comes in and hurts us. It's hard for you to trust anybody. Because again, that message, we got the, the invitation that God gave us in the beginning, come to me, it takes trust. But I'm saying now, because I've been hurt, in me I trust. In me, our currency say, in me I trust. 
Romans 10 and 17 says, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. The seed of faith has to continually be fed and watered through the word of God. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong part. Sorry, that wasn't even supposed to be there. Okay, this is my closing. I want y'all to, to hear this. <coughs> and, and think about this. Put this in your heart. As a plant begins to grow, the part that is exposed to the sunlight is pure and is untainted. But I want you to, I want you to take note of this, that its roots are always still planted in darkness. That represents this world. Even though you're growing, you won't always be planted in darkness. You live here. We still have to live in this dark world. But as, the, as, as long as the plant is receiving sunlight and rain, which is God's grace, it thrives. It doesn't matter that its beginning began in total darkness. God equalized that thing and now has light, but it still has darkness. I want to ask you a question. If the plant then decides that it wants to go back into darkness, what do you think will happen? It will die. Let's say the plant decided that, well, I'm just going to, half of me going to go back into darkness. Or, oh, now, let's just say this. Let's say the plant says, well, I'm just going to go back into darkness, and when I need the light, then I'll come back out. Isn't that what we do? I need a word from the Lord. We leave, we leave, we go back in darkness. Then I need a word. I need you, God. I need a word from the Lord. You know what will happen then? It won't be long before when you come back out for light, you're going to look down and see a weed right there. A weed of doubt. A weed of anxiety. Any gardeners know that weeds choke out the life of plants. So what do you have to do to a weed? When we play with God like that, I'm just going to need God. I'll come back when I need you, when trouble's here. I'm, I'm going to play in the dark. But I'm going to go back to the light when I need God. So I'm a half left. Won't be long before weed is choking, it's, it's choking the life out of you, the godly life out of you. Now, this is where God has to begin to prune us. Right? Any gardeners have to prune? Y'all mm. remember the dream that I had? I think I told yeah. some people in the group. I had a dream, and God gave me a dream. I was in a beautiful garden. But the plants were people. I still saw trees and stuff. And, and there, was a, there was a gardener sitting there. And in the line were people. And the gardener was, was, was saying, okay, give me, give me your limb. Some people had to give a hand, some people had to give a leg, and the gardener was getting ready to cut. And, and every time they get ready to cut it, they would do this. Uh, I need to cut that part off right there. No, no. They, they, they go forth. They, no. God is saying now, I'm the one that planted you. Where did this weed of lust come from? I gotta snip that. Where did this weed of doubt, how did this get so strong? It's getting ready to overtake you. Where did this weed of anger and rage come from? Let, let me snip that off of you. Listen, if you just let me snip it off of you, you'll grow. I'm afraid of you, God. I'm afraid you're going to hurt me. You're already being hurt. I'm trying to heal you. Just let me cut that. Just let me snip. Just, just 
to look just one time. I know it's going to hurt. Because this thing got attached to you. This lust is embedded in you, but let me cut it one time. One thing that I know that the Lord has given me an apostle is the gift of faith. And I want to pray for anyone here. here. If you know you've been dealing with doubt, unbelief, and it's overtaken you, God gave us the gift to overcome. No matter what we've been through in life, we can overcome. Because of God because of God, not because of my own hand. Where, where do we get that gift from? Well, how can I now lay hands on you and impart the gift of faith in you? Because I let my faith, we let our faith be tested. When my flesh was telling me to curse God and die, why would God allow this in your life? I declare God was good. Go ahead and play this song. I want you guys to hear this song and then we're going to begin to minister.